Well, hello there, Vanessa from the West. I see you've come across the Bukchon Hanuk Mall in Korea while you were here on your trip. Um, maybe we should show you around here. Well, you found a great place to find great examples of Hanuk. Well, while you're in here, we'll show you around. Come here. Well, maybe we should tell you what a Hanuk is in the first place before you show you around. A Hanuk is a traditional Korean home, and uh, the Hanuk, the word itself, was actually only first used after Korean culture came into contact with Western culture. So it was coined to differentiate the Korean homes from Western ones. Now, the Hanuks that are left mostly today are Kiwa houses. Kiwa houses were used mostly by kings and nobles of Joseon Dynasty, which is Korea from 1400s to 1900s. Now, back then, the higher your social rank was, the better was the decoration of your roof. We can still find this in modern-day Korea, where the house of the president, Chongade's, roof is pure blue and majestic. While we're talking about social hierarchy, we might as well just talk about how different classes lived in different pre-specified rooms. There were three main classes in the Joseon Dynasty, the royals, the middle class, and the lower class. And the lower you were on the social scale, the closer you lived in the front gate. Um, those rooms near the front gate were mostly affected by the climate, so they were always too warm or too cold. Well, although Korea might not be a big country, it's still big enough to have a different climate depending on the region. Now, as you've seen before, there are three main types of Hanok, each consider the wind flows and the temperature of the region in mind. The doors and windows of the Hanok were also placed strategically to ensure cooler summers and warmer winters. The Hanoks were built using the materials most available at the time. Those included local stone and wood, of course. The pillars and the floor were created using wood, for example, whereas the walls were created using a dirt and straw mixture. Uh, in other words, they were built with a mixture of others. And um, with the other hand, the windows, or windows like doors in the Hanok, were created using traditional Korean paper, and they were supported by wood. Well, the roof of the Hanok is actually often more than a ton heavy, meaning that mere wood pillars and dirt walls have to be strong enough to support something as heavy as a ton of roof bricks. Now, Koreans have done three main things to um, solve this problem. First, they assembled a wooden pillar into four parts. This um, large piece of stone you see here, the chuchutor, um, actually supports the wooden pillar and blocks the moisture from the ground so that the wood won't mold and get weak over time. The roof was also suspended horizontally using rectangular wooden pillars, each arranged perpendicular to one another, so um, to support the uh, weight of the roof and the house itself to the ground. Well, that is not the only scientific aspect of the Hanuk, though, remember that. All Hanuks have an ondo, a sort of cooking stove meets heating system. Using the fire and heat and steam used, created when producing food or anything which requires high amounts of heat in general, the Koreans have actually figured out a way to heat their homes. It's funny, I know, but the method is actually pretty simple. You just funnel the hot air coming from the stove under the house using the principles of thermodynamics. The tunnels used to funnel the hot air were actually specifically designed to be most effective in heat transfer. Well, although there must Excuse more... me, um, this is my part, yeah, so I'm sorry. But, yeah, and there's one more thing which I would like to talk about, which is incredibly scientific and just amazing for me. The roof of the Hanuk is longer and larger than what you would normally see in East Asian buildings. Why is that? Well, that is actually because of the differing angles of the sun and the sunlight shining onto the roof of the Hanuk. And why is that? Well, Koreans mostly position the houses so that the main entrance uh, faced the south. Using this knowledge and combining it with the different positions of the sun in different seasons, the Koreans have figured out a way to let warm sunlight in in the winter and reflect it off in the summer. That's just amazing. Well, although there are much more historically, culturally, and scientifically important factors of Hanok, we'll have to leave it here soon now. Visitor, it might seem a bit inconvenient or undeveloped at the first glance, but we hope you understand that this was the very material choice and design that makes Hanok so scientific and rich in culture. Well, you guys know this, but sadly, this fact isn't well known around the world, or even in Korea, in fact. Um, this, people just judge the Hanuk based on its looks, and consequently, the number of Hanuks in Korea has steadily been decreasing ever since the introduction of Western homes. If only they could understand, right, the meaning of the Hanuk and what it represents, then maybe we could try and delay the decline of Hanuks in Korea for just a bit longer. So, we beg you, visitor. 
Please help us spread the values of economics so that its beauty can be seen by the world for much, much longer to come. Thank you for listening.